Hey, what's going on guys? RVZ Stealth here, and in today's video I have best top laners for Season 4, Patch 4.18. And in this video I'm going to try a new layout, or a new presentation, where I put some gameplay in the background of the video, and just put the pros and cons on the side of the video. So, if you guys do like this new way of me presenting the top 5s, then be sure to comment below and if whatever the majority is, if you guys like it, then I'll continue to do it. But if you don't, then I'll just go back to what I was doing before. So without further ado, let's begin. At my number five spot, I have Maokai. So Maokai, he's dropped on my list because of a few reasons. And one being that if your team doesn't do too well in lane, then it's really hard to carry with Maokai because he doesn't have the best damage. His damage is okay, but if your team feeds, then it's going to be really hard to carry with Maokai. However, if your team does go even, or if your team uh, wins lane, then he's super strong because um, when you go into team fighting, he's got insane CC, he's got great peel, and he's got good engage as well. He's also pretty easy to play, and his ultimate gives 20% reduced damage to teammates that are standing inside of it. He's also super tanky, and he does do a surprising amount of damage if you build Rod of Ages, and then I usually like to build one more AP item on him, either a Rhylize or something like that. Then he does actually quite a bit of damage, and cons to Maokai are he doesn't really have any mobility, so be careful about pushing up in lane with no wards in the laning phase, and he is also quite weak against ranged champions like Lulu. He's also pretty weak against Rumble because Rumble can just use his shield and use his Q and Maokai can't really trade damage with him. So next on my list is Jace. Jace is making his appearance for the first time on my list because I've been playing a lot of Jace recently and I've realized how strong he actually is. He's a pretty big lane bully and he's got a super strong mid game. He's also got really strong poke, and it's really long range poke as well, so if you do well in lane, you can just start sieging down towers as Jace, and it's really hard for your teammates to engage on you. He's also really hard to zone in lane because of his long range, and he counters a lot of melee champions with engage. For example, Jax, if he tries to jump on Jace, then what Jace can do is he can go into melee form and just swat him away with his E, so he counters a lot of engaged champions because of his E in hammer form, and he's also a great split pusher because of his W. Cons to Jace are he is quite mana hungry early game, so be careful you're not spamming your abilities too much. He's also pretty weak when behind, and you want to make sure you have a good laning phase as Jace. He's really strong in the early game, so you have to make sure that you are taking advantage of that. And I'm probably going to make a video on a burst combo for Jace, like his um, best, the most damage you can get out of a combo, because a lot of people don't know how to combo Jace's abilities and get a quick kill early game, so I think I'm going to make a video on that a little bit later. He is also pretty weak, or I already said that, he also has low mobility, so you have to be careful that you're not pushing out in lane because your E most of the time will not save you. So next on my list is Rumble. Pros to Rumble are he is a very strong laner. With his shield and with his Q, he can trade up really easily and he counters Rise actually pretty hard because of his shield. Whenever Rise's Q comes up, Rumble's shield will basically be up at the same time, so if Ryze tries to throw his Q at Rumble, what he can do is just use his shield and negate a lot of that damage. He also has a great level 6 power spike when he gets his ultimate, and he can pretty much all in any champion in the game once he hits level 6 and once he gets his haunting guys. He's an insane team fighter as well because of his ultimate, and he excels in close quarter fights, like in the jungle, because if you can use your ultimate in the jungle, then it's going to be a lot harder for enemies to escape because of the close quarters. And he also has short cooldown abilities, so you're going to be able to get a lot of damage off because of that. And he's also got pretty good CC in his E and his ultimate. Some cons to rumble, or yeah, some cons to rumble are his ultimate can be awkward to use, and it takes a while to get used to in my opinion. And his ultimate is really crucial because it's a really uh, game-changing ability, so 
If you don't play a lot of Rumble and you're looking at playing him, then I'd recommend playing him in some normal games first. Get used to his ultimate because it's a really strong ability, ability and you want to make sure that you're getting it off in teamfights and placing it correctly. He also doesn't have really good mobility and that seems to be the case with most of these top lane champions. So if you're going to push up in lane then buy a ward because it's going to suit you the best and it's going to make sure that you're not dying to ganks. Next on my list is Aurelia. Pros to Aurelia are she has a 2 second stun, but this is only if the target is higher HP than you, so what I like to do as Aurelia is let him poke me down, or let the enemy champion get like a few, like one auto attack off on me so I'm a little bit lower health, and then go in for the stun because you'd much rather have the 2 second stun at, ma at max rank with your E than have the slow. He's, or she's also got a gap closer in her Q. She has really, once she picks up her uh, Triforce, she gains a really big power spike. She also has a low cooldown ultimate, so you can just spam that whenever it's up to either clear waves, or you can also use it to get some good Sheen procs off. She's also pretty easy to play, and she has true damage on her W, so she's strong against tanky champions. She's also got good sustain because of her W, and she can build tanky and still do a lot of damage. Triforce and one other damage item is all Aurelia really needs, and then she can go full tank. She also does quite well against ranged champions because she does have the gap closer, and if they poke her down a little bit, then that basically puts Aurelia in the advantage because she can jump on them and stun them and get a lot of damage off that way. Cons to Aurelia are she is very weak if behind, so try to not try to make sure that you're just farming up. And if you are in an unfavorable matchup, for example, if you're going up against a Pantheon or if you're going up against someone who's gonna poke you down, then buy a Crystalline Flask rather than a Doran's Blade because it's going to help you sustain and help you not get behind. Her E, like I said, also doesn't stun unless they are higher HP, so just try to make sure that you are not if you're going in for a duel, try to be a little bit lower HP than your opponent because it's going to help you out in the long run throughout that fight. So number one on my list is Ryze, and for the last three or four patches, he's just been creeping up on my list and he's finally number one. So pros to Ryze are he's pretty easy to play, or he's really easy to play actually because all of his abilities are point and click. He counters a lot of melee champions as well because they can't really engage on him because of his W. If they try to, then all he has to do is point and click with his W and they are just stopped wherever they are. He can build uh, tanky and still do a lot of damage because he scales with mana, so he can build a frozen heart and he can build all those good tanky items and still do a lot of damage. He's also super boosty come late game and he can pretty much duel any champion in the game late game because he does so much burst damage and he does so much DPS damage while being tanky at the same time. He also has short cooldowns on all his abilities and he is a late game monster. Constorize are he is pretty mana hungry early game so don't spam your abilities or you will be running out of mana fairly quickly. And he's also really weak if behind so what I like to do if I'm playing against a rise or if I'm playing jungle against a rise I like to try to camp top lane because if Ryze doesn't get his tier stacking and he doesn't get his Rod of Ages quickly, then he's not going to be very strong at all. So if you're playing against Ryze and you're playing jungle, then try to camp top lane and shut him down early because that's what will... You, you'll just be able to shut down his uh, potential and it will take him a lot longer to get to that late game Ryze. So that is all for the video guys, if you enjoyed then be sure to like and subscribe and remember to comment below telling me if you like this new format of video. And as always guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.